Christ Jesus, what kind of authority do you have for doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Welcome to Hawfield's Presbyterian Church, where we build, grow, and share. Our bathrooms are located behind us in the education building. Our nursery is also located in the education building. We have, of course, welcome our visitors. There are cards available for you to provide us with contact information if you wish. Also, anyone can use these to schedule time with a pastor or other staff members or to ask for prayers. The same thing can be done with our church app. Just tap the connect button. Today our youth are leading, reflecting on the themes and lessons from the Massanetta Middle School Conference this summer. Many thanks to the folks who have helped us make this possible. Habitat work days are scheduled for October 14th and November 18th. Talk to Greg Massey this Sunday. The Presbyterian Women Team packing hygiene kits as part of hurricane relief for Presbyterian disaster assistance on Tuesday, October 10th. Donations of hand towels, washcloths, nail clippers, wide tooth combs, band-aids, bar soap, and toothbrushes are appreciated and needed. Chicken dinner tickets are now on sale. Flowers were placed today in honor and thanks to Reverend David Healy for his continued service to Hallfields Presbyterian Church. <laughs> Baked goods and vestibule cell service make a donation. Um, many thanks to everyone who worked so hard to make Community Day such a success. We especially thank Sean Cooper, Sid Norton, Bob Walden, Connie Norton, Ira Trollinger, Nanette Pedalty, and Danny Thompson. I think it's fair to say that we should also give thanks to all of the many groups who participated and um, really helped make the day pretty great, um, including the Crest Tree Women. Um, to the worship team who helped uh, Neil with some of the sound issues, um, and of course all of the vendors who came and all of the participants. It really was a really great event. Um, God was smiling on us because we did have a really huge dark cloud that came over and it kept sailing on by and it rained on Burlington. So it just goes to show you, don't live in Burlington. But we are very, very grateful um, to all those folks named and more who did everything. While I'm up, I did want to mention, those of you who prefer sheet music to the words, we do have that available if you want. Those were up front, but if you didn't get one, if you raise your hand, I'll bring one to you. Men, don't forget about the men's breakfast next Sunday morning at 8 o'clock in the fellowship hall. Our theme today is All Together Now. God did try to save one, God wants to save us all, and all is what it takes. Now, whether in body or spirit, let us rise together and greet one another in Christ. <laughs>
worship. God calls to us from all that would distract us from our common task to worship. Let us draw our hearts and minds together for the true audience in this moment. God. We are all God's children through faith in Christ Jesus.
between not at work in mean, Bible times, but also now. The Spirit of God is still changing hearts and fashioning the world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the peace of Christ, be with you. And also with you. The peace of Christ, be with us all. Amen.
You have, you've had five husbands, and the man you are with now isn't your husband. You've spoken the truth. The woman said, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you and your people say that it is necessary to worship in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the time is coming when you and your people will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You and your people worship what you don't know. We worship what we know because salvation is from the Jews. But the time is coming and is here when, worship, when true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. The Father looks for those who worship in, in this way. God is spirit. It is necessary to worship God in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming. The one who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will teach everything to us. Jesus said to her, I am the one who speaks with you. Just then, Jesus' disciples arrived and were shocked that he was talking with a woman. But none asked, what do you want, or why are you talking to her? The woman put down her water jar and went to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who had told me everything I have done. Give this man be the Christ. They left the city and were on their way to see <coughs> The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Could any children come forward for the children? Oh. 
Will you try? So he did. Thank you. It's perfect. You're welcome. It was easy. And he didn't stop there. Blue jeans. Blue bells. Blue bird. Blue bears. Blue well. I'm blue. He was blue, and everyone was talking. My son is brilliant. Who could have known he was blue? I always said he was blue. It was obvious. His blue ocean really lifted me. All of his work makes me happy. His blue strawberries are my favorite. He's so intense. I'm going to make a green lizard with him, a really big one. I hear he's working on a huge new project. He's really reaching for the sky. And he really was.
together now. So when the middle schoolers travel to Massanetta, um, first of all, for those of you who don't know, it's in Harrisonburg, Virginia. And the purpose of the conference is to help them, um, of course, center around the theme, but really dig into what the Bible has to say um, about their lives. And one of the um, principal issues that all middle schoolers have to deal with is, of course, identity. Who am I? Who are, who are we? What are we supposed to be together? And so with all of that in mind, um, we dig into this thing that's presented to us. Now, how many of you have siblings? Okay, good. And do you like your siblings? <laughs> wow, there's not a lot of consensus there. Okay. Um, what, do you, what do you like about your siblings?
Samaritan story really points out to us isn't so much the actions of the Good Samaritan. It's the challenge that Jesus drops on the lawyer when he's done. Because he says, go and do likewise. He didn't say, if you know them. He didn't say, if their help is legitimate or the need that they have is legitimate. He just says, go and do likewise. Well, what happened was the guy was moved with compassion. That was the only prerequisite. And sometimes I wonder if we forget that we overcomplicate what God really wants from us just because, I don't know, we want to get out of actually helping our brothers and our sisters. But in the story of the woman who is at the well, how many of you have heard that story before you went to Nazareth? Yeah? You've heard of it? And, and what, what stuck out to you about that story? Amen. Um, that he kind of already knew about her before he, before she was done with her. Well, the fact that Jesus is also a Jew, and again, Samaritans and Jews didn't really get along back then. Right. And especially Samaritan women were not respected. Uh, he still talked to her, even though he supposedly Jews were better than Samaritans. So, even though they had a cultural divide, even though um, he knew her. Still talked to her. And what did they talk about? You remember? They talked about what real worship is. Right? If I were to ask you what is real worship, what would you say? Is it this? Well, then what are we doing here? Well, because at the end of the day, real worship is worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Well, what does that mean? I think it goes back, um, actually, to the story of the Good Samaritan in the ways in which we tend to perceive people. I want you to look at this picture and tell me if you can tell the ethnicity of this woman. Is she Samaritan? Is she Jew? Is she Israeli? Is she Palestinian? What's her ethnicity? She's from Cleveland. <laughs> She's from Cleveland. But, you know, the problem is we do that. We make assumptions on what we think we know, what we think we see, what we think we have. And God's the only one who has that view. God is the only one who has that, that God's eye view of the entire world and of us as individuals. And yet we try to assume that role well often in our dealings with each other. And it's wrong. There is but, as we like to, my wife and I like to say to our girls, there are only two parents in the house. And we say, are you it? And we go, no. <laughs> but I hear God saying the same thing to us. There's only one God in this universe. Are you it? No. Then what gives? Why is it that, of course, there are differences? But why can't we acknowledge that we also share a lot as humanity? Now, ironically, um, to illustrate this point, um, the middle schoolers like, like this clip that they experienced at the conference. And we're going to share it with you. It's from the movie Zootopia. I don't know how many of you have seen it, but you should if you haven't. Um, but in this scene, um, the officer is being asked to explain how they cracked this case. And you should pay attention to the differences that she has made. Now, I'll turn things over to the officer who cracked the case. Officer Judy Hobbs. Officer Hobbs! Officer Hobbs! Over here! Over here! Yes? What can you tell us about the animals that went savage? Well, the, the, an the animals in question... Um, Are they all different species? Yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> okay, so what is the connection? Oh, all we know is that they are all members of the predator family. So predators are the only ones going savage? That is accurate. Yes, that is accurate, yes. Why? Why is this happening? We still don't know. <laughs> but, uh, it may have something to do with biology. What do you mean by that? A biological component, you know, something in their 
DNA. In their DNA, can you elaborate on that, please? Yes. What I mean is, thousands of years ago, um, predators survived through their uh, aggressive hunting instincts. For whatever reason, they seem to be reverting back to their primitive savage ways. It is possible, so we must be vigilant, and we at the ZPD are prepared and are here to protect We're you. We're more mammals, go savage! What is being done to protect us? Have you considered a mandatory quarantine on predators? Okay, thank you, Officer Hops. Uh, that's all the time that we have. No more questions. Was I okay? Oh, you did fine. Oh, that went so fast. I didn't get a chance to mention you or say anything about how we... Oh, I think you said plenty. What do you mean? Clearly, there's a biological component. These predators may be reverting back to their primitive, savage ways. Are you serious? I just stated the facts of the case. I mean, it's not like a bunny could go savage. Right, but a fox could, huh? Nick, stop it. You're not like them. Oh, there's a them now. Uh, you know what I mean. You're not that kind of predator. The kind that needs to be muscled? The kind that makes you think you need to carry around fox repellent? Yeah, don't think I didn't notice that little item the first time we met. So, l let me ask you a question. Are you afraid of me? Do you think I might go nuts? You think I might go savage? You think I might try to eat you? <gasps> I knew it. <laughs> That's when I thought somebody actually believed in me, huh? It's probably best if you don't have a predator as a partner. So what did y'all think when you saw this? What did it make you think of? I thought when she said that all predators and many predators were going to touch, I messed up. Why? Because that's basically saying just because someone doesn't have the same skin color as you, they could be less smart than me. Okay. Um, I, I think I kind of remember what's out. She didn't really mean to, like, she didn't mean it the way she said it, but she thinks she didn't mean it the way she said it, but she did say it, so there was some truth in what she said to her, like, in her opinion. <coughs>
name with anybody else? Yeah. Did you think you were better than everybody else? Yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> did anybody so you? Yeah. <laughs> so you learned you were wrong? No. <laughs>
offering is a chance for us to further demonstrate together our commitment, or at least a portion of it. What we might put in the plate or submit online is a token of what we should be doing with the whole of our lives, exercising the authority of Christ.
Great God, you have made children of all the families of the earth. You have given your life to see to it that we would all be blood relatives. Let it be as you wish. Don't let our selfishness prevent your dreams for us from coming true. Let us get to the place where we really see neighbors all around us. Let us stop seeing each other in divisions, but rather as brothers and sisters. Seriously, if our world, our town, our church is a better place, then let it begin with us, with all of us. With that in mind, we all lift up to you these questions are not included. Staff member of the month, Neil Allen, Justin Brown, Carol Rebecca Smith, Pat Webster, A and B, and Linda Flexico, Joel Rosser, Ellen McCabell, Shelly Kai, Josephine Miner, Betty Sight, Ben Hyman, Connie Norton. The victims of Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico, Reagan Hartley, Ellen Jean Clapp, Ron Overman, Al Thompson, Tyler Phillips, the family of Jerry Johnson, Terry Leftwich, the victims of the mass shooting in Las Vegas, praise for the great event in Cyclone, North Carolina, Youth in our church, thank God for each one. Now, God, put love in our hearts and put words in our mouths, especially when we pray Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. Jesus is calling you. Oh. 